I'm absolutely delighted to be joined for my big interview by Labour's current leader. And everybody seems to think you'll still be leader next week yet when the election result is announced. Are you absolutely confident you've won? We'll know on Saturday morning. Now, um, there is a lot of talk and there's a, quite a big story in The Observer this morning about the reforms that you want for the way the shadow cabinet is created if you win next weekend. Can you talk me through what your proposal is? Well, I don't have a proposal at the moment. The Parliamentary Labour Party have passed a resolution saying they would like elections to the shadow cabinet, but the number is not determined within that resolution. There are also issues of democracy in the party as a whole that have to be addressed. For example, there are only six allocated seats for constituency Labour parties and there are now more than half a million members. So there are various areas that I think we need to improve representation and democracy within the party, within the shadow cabinet and within the national executive. And so there will be a, a round discussion on this at the national executive on Tuesday. Do you expect the national executive committee to make a decision on the reform on Tuesday. I, I, my sources on the NEC say they do expect a decision because that's, you, you, unless there's a decision, there can't be a vote at conference. There are some proposals we'll definitely be putting forward and those are the ones uh, indicated by Shami Chakrabarti about bringing in a process for dealing with uh, bad behaviour within the party. On the others, I think it's an open discussion we'll have on Wednesday, Tuesday rather and we'll decide what to do from there. But can I just uh, clarify your position you would like to see at least a proportion of the shadow cabinet elected by members. That's I correct, isn't it? I understand it? the feelings that a proportion is fine, but I do think there has the to be... There has to be the whole thing, maybe? No, I don't think the whole thing. I think there has to be also a recognition that we have a system where the leader is elected by the membership and supporters as a whole, mm. and clearly the leader has a mandate coming from that election yeah. and has put forward various views. Owen Smith and I have both put forward views on the economy, on lots of other issues, and I think that has to be reflected in the way in which the party in Parliament operates. So, would you like to see a sort of hybrid system where some members of the Shadow Cabinet would be elected, you would choose a certain number, uh, and perhaps the PLP would choose a certain number? Well, I think we have to look at it. Uh, I, I don't want to be give you any specifics at the moment, because I can't, because I don't right. have any specifics. There will be a discussion. I recognise the wishes of MPs, I recognise the feelings of party members, but I also absolutely recognise, above all else, the need for the party to come together yeah. after this election is over, so that we do have a strong united shadow cabinet where all positions are filled so that we can take the fight to the Tories on grammar schools, on 11 plus, all these issues that are actually so important. That but is what our function is. How are you going is. to unite the party? By reaching out, as I've tried to do in the past and will do so again, reaching out, recognising the talents of people who actually broadly agree these days on an anti-austerity economic strategy, absolutely agree on the need to defeat the Tories' education strategy, absolutely agree on the need to fund properly our national health service, including our mental health service. It's an awful lot on which the party is actually in complete agreement. But do you fundamentally believe that the members should have a greater say on the choice of your front bench. I mean, I'll tell you why. It's because this would represent a big change to the, the way, frankly, that our parliamentary system works, because at that point, those people would effectively be representatives, sorry, would be delegates rather than representatives. They would effectively be instructed by members in terms of what they do. That would be a big change. I think you've put your finger on actually a very interesting dilemma in British politics yep. in that the Labour Party was founded to be a party in the country and in Parliament. Yep. And it's the question of the balance between the powers of the parliamentary party and the powers of party members, mm. which are generally expressed through National Executive and Conference. Yep. And I think that there is a growing belief in our society that too much policy making is top down, mm. there's too much elitism in politics and there has to be a much greater representation of the views of members of the party who after all raise the funds, run the party, knock on doors, deliver leaflets and deliver election results on which Labour MPs rely. Now in terms of the challenge to present a more united front. There's a report in the Mail on Sunday that there was a meeting at a Unite Country house and they're saying that you 
and your colleagues there talked about getting rid of Tom Watson, uh, the deputy leader, and Ian McNichol, the general secretary of the Labour Party. True? Well, it's not exactly a country house. It's a <laughs> United Education Centre right. that was formerly owned by the... I saw the picture. It looks like quite a nice it's education centre. It's center. a very nice education centre, and it has some beautiful trees in its garden. And I did spend some time discussing the trees with the gentleman who looks after them. He's a very nice man, he is too. Um, yes, we did have a, a meeting there of some of my senior staff. We had a discussion about policy directions. We had a discussion about uniting yep. the party, actually. So the idea that but this Tom was some Watson sort of... And Ian McNichol staying in office? What do you think about that? Their names were obviously part of discussion. You can't have a discussion in anything in the Labour Party without the na names McNichol and Watson coming up. But do you want them to serve? Look, I work very, as, well, as I work very well with them um, yeah. and we're going to carry on working together. Listen, I get the feeling sometimes some of the media are not necessarily well disposed towards the do Labour Party. Do you think that's party. true? Well, there's some evidence well, to suggest it. Well, the, the only... 84% of the media report of the Labour Party in the last year has been hostile. So they could up their game and put it up to 90%. Or you, they could be fairer. Now you know that there's some television coming your way, dispatches on Channel 4, which is going to be um, looking at the way that momentum operates. You were very dismissive recently when Tom Watson talked about Trotskyite entryism. But there's very little doubt that momentum is trying to seize control of the party. Are you no. comfortable with that? No, nobody's seizing control of anything. What we've got is a 300,000 increase in membership in one year. And so the Labour Party, any party that had that increase in membership would be a rather different place. Mm. And uh, those members actually come from a very wide range of political opinion. They're not necessarily all fixed in one position. Many are completely new to politics. Some are older members returning to the Labour Party because they left over Iraq or, or other issues. A lot are actually young people who've come into politics for the first time. It's actually very exciting. And when we do our leadership election rallies, the most amazing thing is the, the ethnic diversity, the age diversity, the gender balance of those events. And that's very exciting. Surely we can be happy that all these people have got involved in politics? Isn't that what we all have dreamt for? S some of them, though, we know were members of the entryist unit that was re regarded as, or was ruled as illegal, militant. They joined the Socialist Party. They are trying to exert influence. Do you think Socialist Party members should have a role in your Labour Party? People have to be supporters of the Labour Party to join the Labour Party. They cannot be in an organisation that's opposed to the Labour Party or runs candidates against the Labour Party. That's very they clear. they keep their ideas and join the Labour well, Party. You can't uh, deny people thought processes or ideas, but I simply say this, that uh, any small group is always a very small group. 300,000 new members is many, many hundreds of percent bigger than any left group in this country has ever been. Uh, Jeremy, we'll be talking to you more after the break. Uh, welcome back to Person on Sunday. I can exclusively reveal that Jeremy Corbyn has just confided to Ed Balls that he has no plans to go on Strictly Come Dancing. But before we return uh, to Jeremy, uh, Allegra, when you look through the square window, are you seeing peace and unity breaking out in the Labour Party? Some peace and unity. The, the uh, deputy political editor of The Mirror thinks Jeremy Corbyn's putting in a relaxed and pretty fluent appearance on your show, Robert. And he doesn't look like someone who thinks he's going to lose his job next week. I think we can all agree on that. But then Beth Rigby, Sky reporter, points out this contradiction from the various Sunday political programmes. Here with us, Jeremy Corbyn's talking of reaching out, but on another programme, Andy Marr's programme, Clive Lewis uh, describes deselection of MPs as democratic selection, so suggests it might need to go ahead and that might be a good thing. Um, but our guest today may be about to win the contest next week, but can he win the country? Britain Elects uh, has put out this polling. It's pretty interesting. It shows that of us all, 10% describe themselves as left-wing. Jeremy Corbyn is <laughs> peering at this finding. But 45% put themselves in the centre. So the question for Jeremy Corbyn is, can he connect with this ginormous part of the electorate? Robert. Uh, thanks so much, um, Allegra. Um, let's just pick up on that uh, point that Clive Lewis made. And there was a lot of talk about a hit list being drawn up of rebellious MPs who you would like to see the back of. Will there be deselections? 
There will be selections made by local constituency parties. I have a democratic mandate as leader. That democratic mandate doesn't give me the power to instruct, impose uh, people all over the country. There will be boundary changes in all probability. Therefore, pretty well every constituency will be a new boundary. But that does sound to me like a slightly veiled threat that if... Mm. MPs don't toe the line, they're out. No, it's not a veiled threat. It's, the, it's a direct threat. <laughs> no, it's not a direct threat either. It's not any kind of threat. What it is, is simply s describing the process. There are going to be 600 new constituency Labour parties formed, as there will be for other parties, and they will go through a selection process where the sitting MP has a substantial geographical claim on the new constituency. They're automatically put forward. If there is a trigger ballot to have an open selection, that MP is obviously automatically on the shortlist because of their existing uh, geographical claim to the constituency. Listen, my own constituency is being split into three by the proposal of the Boundary Commission, which is rather unkind. Now, Alan Johnson has called on Labour MPs to work day and night to unseat you. Have you got a message for Alan Johnson? Well, thanks, Alan. That's really, really helpful when uh, we're trying to reach out. And uh, You saw John Prescott recently. Tell me yeah, about that well, meeting. Uh, it's interesting, the whole connection here, isn't it? They're both MPs from Hull, or John was, of course. Um, y yes, I had a very good chat with John Prescott after Prime Minister's Question Time on Wednesday. And... Um, I'm happy to work with Alan as, as we did on the uh, EU referendum campaign and uh, had a very good chat with John Prescott about Prime Minister's Question Time but also about the party coming together, about the party issues on which we're united, economy, education, health, do the campaigning on that and I mean, he thinks we're in a strong position. I mean it's interesting that Prescott in the mirror today is calling on MPs and you to reach an all taunt. Yeah. Neil Kinnock on the BBC is saying that he doesn't believe with you likely to win the election, um, that he will see a Labour victory in his lifetime. Well, I hope Neil can be a bit more optimistic. Allegra made the point about, um, on the point there on the screen, about reaching out to the centre ground. I simply say this, Britain is becoming a more divided country, greater levels of inequality, greater levels of poverty, real wages for many but people you're falling. seen as in the centre, but can I just, no, but, uh, yeah, you, could, but. You, could, you, could, you could address it in that context. I mean, Allegra pointed out that most British people think of themselves as somehow in the centre, either centre-left yeah. or yeah. pure centre. Yeah. Yeah. You're seen as on the left. How uh, do you connect with them? I connect with them by simply saying this. Do we want an education system that works for all or works for the few? Do we want a health service that works for everybody or is a health service of last resort for those who can't afford to go private. Do we want an investment strategy that builds railways, broadband communication over the whole of the country, not just in the southeast? Do we want a government that actually works for the whole country and reaches out to those places that have been left behind, deindustrialization, underinvestment, terrible levels of poverty and low opportunities, low education opportunities for so many young people in those places? It's reaching out to the whole country. That's what we're offering. If Owen Smith loses, as more or less everybody expects him to lose, what role for him in your party? I'll be talking to Owen and, uh, if I'm elected and see what we can do working together. We've spent an awful lot of time in debate with each other. I think we're now running up to over 20 hours of discussing each other's views. So we're getting to know each other pretty well. Well, it's great to see you uh, again. Uh, I think we're both in a chip of mood because Arsenal seems to be winning Fantas again. Fantastic, um, wasn't and, it? Uh, Fantastic. Shame about the missed penalty, but the rest of it was great. Brilliant. Well, uh, great to see you and thanks for coming on. Now back to Allegra and her giant game of Pokemon Go. Have you caught them all? Well, hold on. Before we get on to that, I'm just going to show you a tweet from the deputy political editor of the Sunday Times, Corbyn, here, attacking this paper for revealing plot to purge party stuff but doesn't deny it. Is that fair? Anyway, anyway, moving, <laughs> moving I, I on. I always admire the imagination on. of these papers.